today's video I'm going to be doing up a side table I think it's more like a nightstand bedside table I bought from the Facebook marketplace it was $15 and I thought it was really different but the only thing is it is very shiny shiny veneer and I've never ever painted veneer before or really worked with veneer I have laminate but that's sort of a bit different um, because I think veneer is just like a really thin wood and you can see how thin it is there the problem was underneath it was chipboard as well um, there are a few other things I had to fix this drawer let's get started I've seen in other videos how they fix the veneer and that is they actually pull off completely any loose parts and that was a bit scary because I didn't sort of know where that was going to end. After I did that I sanded it back, I sanded the top back and the side. What I didn't realise was at the time though it was chipboard underneath and I'm thinking should I just dig it out and I started digging it out but then it's all started flaking away. And so I panicked and I thought I'm just going to leave it. Um, I'm learning as I go. I don't know what I'm doing. So what I thought I might do is just reinforce what was there with like a timber filler. Um, I've seen people in videos use Bondo, but I don't know what the equivalent of that is in Australia. I was thinking afterwards too, maybe I could have just used like a maxi nails and smoothed that out and so to sort of bond it in place. But I think this might be fine. actually apparently called scuff sanding so you're not actually sanding it um, you're actually just scuffing it so you're creating a little bit of roughness to the texture uh, of it as well I found though and I thought that actually it wasn't doing enough so what I did <laughs> which may not have been the best thing to do was here I'm using an 80 grit so I start using the 80 grit and you can see it's bringing off a whole lot more and I started worrying actually because I'm thinking what am I doing and this is what actually what came off so it's like little crystals so it actually was a really uh, some sort of shiny varnish but I just cleaned it off and cleaned it with sugar soap and it was fine I got that little um, screwdriver from Aldi once, it was $19.95 and I love it, so cute. <laughs> this, these handles were really pretty, um, I've never seen anything like them before anywhere in shops so I'll keep them for another project because I'm not putting them back on. I'm going to have to fix the front of this drawer, it was sort of peeling away a little so I'm just getting my trusty maxi nails you can get this from Bunnings it's about $2.50 and I use it for everything and I'm just putting some behind the actual molding on the front and I'll clamp it until it's dry I'm going to fill in these holes because I'm putting different handles on. Um, I love the handles and they were one of the things that attracted me to this in the first place. It's just, I don't know whether it's a color of the piece now plus the color of the handles together. I don't know whether it's a scale, like it, they look very big. It just looks a bit cluttered. And I know it's gonna have to have handles and I do have an idea for the handles I'm putting on.
finished up painting and I'm going to use the Aldi paint. So I, I love Aldi paint. The other day they had some more. But if we'll leave it in, it's $29.95. And I find it so thick and creamy and really good. I was going to use mineral paint, uh, but I'm going to use that on my next upcycle. I just love the Aldi paint and this one's called Calcium. So hopefully it will be as good as the last tin I got which was really thick and creamy and it just covers so well and it actually wears so well also. This is the first coat. This is what it looks like after the first coat. And always at this stage, I'm thinking, what have I done? What have I done? Why haven't I used primer? Why haven't I used undercoat? But, you know, the more coats you put on, the better it looks. So um, while this is very patchy, it does improve. <laughs> I'm not using any primer, sealer or undercoat for this and I said in my in one of my other videos that I would never do that again and I have done it again <laughs> but um, as it turned out it was fine it's just that you have to put so many more coats of paint on this is actually the first coat and um, I think I put five coats on in the end and I think I even did a sixth one on the top which sounds absolutely ridiculous I know but being a shiny veneer I just wanted to make sure not only it stuck and stayed on and there was enough but it um, covered it really well too because being dark underneath that's that can be a problem with light paint What I'm doing here is taking some brown acrylic water based paint, adding water to it to make like a stain or a tint because I just want to clean up the inside of the actual drawer, well the drawer sides because they look a little bit patchy and I want to do this because I'm going to put an acrylic vinyl decal on there just to spruce it up a little bit. I mean. Not many people are going to see it, but any excuse to go on the Cricut machine. So if you can see there, it's quite patchy. The paint's just sort of smoothing over the um, timber and making it nice and uniform in colour. I made this design up on Canva as I normally do. You can do so much on there. And now I'm weeding it and I'll be placing it on the side of the drawers on the inside. So as you saw before, there was like a groove running down the middle and that's where the drawer actually slides into the roller sort of thing. So I'm going to have to cut my design in half and I thought I'd put the top part above the groove, the bottom part below, it still looks like it's part of the one piece. It's just um, has, has to be separated, otherwise, you know, it's not going to stay on.
put the drawers back in also I noticed there were little gaps that were really noticeable again because I've painted it white so I just filled those gaps in with wood filler and I painted them also on the front on some of the wooden decals you could see little separations between the decal and the timber there so I also filled those in because they were really annoying me <laughs> I've always wanted to try these rub-on transfers and so I found a shop on eBay that sells them. It's the Furniture Transfer Emporium. Um, so if you go onto eBay and just type that in, um, either that or rub-on transfers furniture, it should come up. Next project I do, I'm going to do a pretty colourful one, but this one I wanted to do black and white and it was $16. They range from $16 to $20. I think the colourful ones are about $18 and they give you an extra little one that you can use as a sample. thought long and hard about how I'd place these and I wasn't sure I was either going to do it like that or I was going to put them all down one side but after I cut them out and I sort of just plonked them on and had a look I thought it looked a bit it was a lot asymmetrical <laughs> I mean they were asymmetrical anyway but yeah it just looked off balance so I'll just this I've actually put this in almost real time I speed it up a tiny bit because I'm so slow but it will just give you a good idea on the process so you peel off the shiny layer it's actually sticky so you place it face down the image face down you rub it and then you apply a wet sponge wait 20 seconds and then peel it off I think these are a little bit different to the other rub-on transfers I've seen. Um, this one you have to wet and then pull off. The other ones I've seen in some videos, you just rub on and basically you rub them until when you peel off the paper, you can't see it on the paper. But this was so ultra easy, actually probably even easier than those because you've got to sort of keep rubbing until it's transferred on this way sort of just stick it down smooth it over wet it and peel the back off and um, I'm really impressed <laughs> really impressed they're so pretty I decided to distress this piece, Just I distressed the drawers, I distressed the top around the sides as well. I was just a little bit worried painting over a veneer, shiny veneer that paint, if it came off it would be obvious. I didn't have to worry though because with five coats of paint on this it was quite hard to even distress it so um, yeah <laughs> but I'm pleased I did. I then put a coat of, just one coat of beeswax on and I always use this, I prefer this actually to the varnishes. Um, it gives the pieces, and I was trying to think of the word, uh, a beautiful glow and they just look so powdery soft and feel it too and they're easy to wipe over if anything's spilt on. My husband actually spilled petrol on the outdoor table that I waxed and it was fine so I mean that's that's the sort of protection it gives 
Um, so I did that and I gave it a bit of a polish after leaving it for about 30 minutes. the $5.20 can of spray paint it's a matte black and these were the handles on my previous upcycle and I just sprayed them I sprayed the heads of the screws as well the screws actually were so tiny and it was really hard to screw them into here so I borrowed George's drill and I drilled into it I screwed them in by hand luckily everything went fine and I think it's just the icing on the cake for this piece Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As promised, I haven't forgotten about the slipcover pattern. That will be up next week sometime. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.